today I'm going to show you how to edit which form elements show up in your email when you use the DataBridge email tools. You may have noticed that when you go with default templates in the email wizard, all of the elements get sent in your email. So you may end up with some form elements that don't make sense, especially if the email is actually going to the user that submitted the form. So I'm going to first show you how to remove only specific elements. So going with all the elements, but removing say one or two that you don't want. And then next I'll show you how to remove all of them and add them back in so that you could have full control. You could change the order of the elements um, and fully customize it. So first, um, before you get started on these steps, you'll want to have built a form. I used uh, the form tools in DataBridge to create an appointment request form. Um, and then I also like to add a success page so that when I run the email wizard, I can tell uh, the email wizard what page I want the user to land on after the form has been submitted and the email sends. This can be a very simple page that just says uh, thank you for submitting or requesting your appointment um, and uh, you can put whatever else you want on that page. Here is the form that I set up. This is my appointment request form. Now I set this up in Form Builder. If I go into the Form Builder wizard, I can show you how I originally set up my email. On the Form Function tab, I set up the basics of my email here. So what that did is in my Server Behaviors panel, and if you don't already have this open, you can select Server Behaviors from the Window menu, it gave me a behavior called universal email. Um, so I can edit uh, my email from there. Now if you have your own form and you didn't use the form builder tools in DataBridge, um, then you can create the same function. It pulls up the exact same wizard by going to Web Assist, create email message. Um, so once you've done that, then you'll be able to follow the, follow the same steps once that wizard pops up. Since I already have this behavior on the page, I'm going to double click universal email over here. The first field is the trigger. Um, mine picked up the button on the page. Uh, if you're creating a brand new email message, it will probably default to current page submit. Either of those are fine. Something that is submitting the form page is what we basically want to pick up here. The second field is the go-to page. When I told you to create a success page uh, before starting the steps in this tutorial, I'm, this, is the, this is now the page you're going to want to specify here. So I created a form success page uh, that says thank you for submitting your appointment request. Um, and that's you can browse to the folder to select that file you created right here. The next field is the from field. You can either type in the address you want the email to say it's coming from, or you can select this dynamically. I selected it dynamically, which means I clicked on this lightning bolt icon. I looked for my form name, and I went down to email address and clicked OK. The next field is the to field. Again, for to copy and blind copy, you can type something in, or you can select a dynamic option. The subject is the email subject. You can type in what you want there, and you are also able to use uh, dynamic pieces if you want in your email subject. Now we always suggest checking manage email body from file. If you select this, this means it creates the email in its own web page, which makes it a lot easier to make updates to. So if you want to update your email template later, or go through the steps that I'm going to walk you through in this tutorial, um, then, then you definitely want to select this checkbox to allow for easy editing. I've picked a template that I would like to use. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. So what this did is it created a template in my website, and you're going to find the template under Web Assist, email and the name of your page will be the name of the template. So I'm going to go ahead and open that template. So it should look something like this. In this middle row, which you'll see the PHP tags around, um, this is what repeats through your form and selects all of the elements in your form and includes them in the email. 
So now that we have our form created, our form success page, and our email, let's go ahead and see how that works by default in the browser, and then we can take the steps to edit it once we see what's really there. So I've pulled up my form uh, in Safari here. Let's go ahead and put in some dummy information. My form is filled out. I'll go ahead and submit it. And I land on my form success page. So now let's go look at the email. This is the appointment request email that got sent and you can see all of the form elements just repeat down the page. There's nothing custom about them. They pick up everything. There was a terms of agreement checkbox in my form. It even picked that up. One means that it was checked. Now that might be a good field that um, we can practice leaving out in, in the email because um, I'm not sure why somebody would really want to see that in the email. So if there's uh, one or two fields, these are the steps that you're going to take. Let's go back to Dreamweaver. Go to your email page. Mine is block.php because block was my template. And at the very top of the page, uh, make sure you're looking in code view. You're going to see a PHP tag and then some remove references. What we want to do is remove the field uh, terms. So let's go over to the form and let's make sure we understand um, exactly how this field name is spelled. If we go to the form, scroll down to the terms, click on the checkbox because that's the actual field that gets submitted. And then if you go over and look in the property inspector, we can see the name of that field. So terms with a capital T. Let's go back to our email. We can copy this, this remove equals y line, paste it on the next line, and we're going to replace y with our field name, terms. Now we have said we're going to loop through all of the field elements except this one called terms. Save the page. Now let's go back to the browser, submit the form again, and see what it looks, see what the email looks like. Okay, we'll fill in our form. I'll use different information so you can see the, the difference in the email once we look at it. And let's go ahead and submit. I've toggled over to my email and you can see here that this is the form that got submitted with the new person, John Webb. And if you look, you can see that terms is no longer one of the field elements that was included in this email, just like we specified to leave it out. So if you come back to Dreamweaver, you can go back up to that line, and if there are other fields you'd like to leave out, all you need to do is copy-paste that and then replace terms with the correct field name. The next thing that I want to show you is how to remove all of the repeating form elements and add in only the ones you want. So go ahead and click on one of the PHP tags in the row that has the, the elements that repeat. And then I like to come over to a code view. Um, you'll see the table row that got selected there, but we want to delete all the PHP around it too. So we're going to take all of that and delete it. Then you can go ahead and come back to design view and click in the additional notes section or um, wherever you want to add a row above it. Now remember we're using tables because this is an email page uh, which you know is old school. You, it requires tables in order for your format to look correct in uh, various email clients. So go ahead and click in one of the cells that you want to add a table above it. You can right click, go to table, insert rows or columns, and let's go ahead and add two rows above the selection. Okay, so let's say we want to send only the first name and the email address, just for the sake of the demo to show you how to do this. We'll go ahead and put in a label on each line, first name, 
email. And then next to each of those, we're going to need to add that information that got dynamically added in the form. So come over to your bindings window, click the plus button, and we're going to click form data. Now this is asking you what form page um, are you getting this information from? So we're going to browse to uh, my form page and click OK. Now you can see all of my fields that are on my form page are listed over here. So for the first name cell, I'm going to go over to my first name field and I can just drag that onto the page where I want it. I'm going to do the same thing with email. And we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll go over to a browser and we'll fill out the form again and we'll take a look and make sure only first name and email show up. Here's the form pulled up again in Safari and we'll go ahead and fill it out and um, look at the new email. Let's go over to our email now that that's submitted. And you can see my email has just the first name and the email fields now, just like we had specified on our template page, um, our email page in Dreamweaver. Hope this was helpful, and as usual, if you'd like more information or technical support, please visit us at www.webassist.com. Thank you.